all 23 yards he accounted for in that scoring drive. And it was a beautifully designed play by Bill Snyder and his staff to get that touchdown. Here's Davis from the seven. At the 26 yard line, hit by Josh Buell. Well, we saw the block. Let's look at the play. It's off a of bootleg. There's the receiver coming around the corner. And where's the option? There's the block by Terry right there to spring it now into the end zone. Actually, L. Roberson gets inside four defenders. Four Nebraska defenders overrun the play. You can't do that on option football. Looks like that block was on the Bullocks. The was it on Bullocks? Charge. I didn't know who it was. Yeah, for I think sure. it was Josh. This is Ross. Ross to the 33, and uh, let's check it down below with Jack. Well, Brent, in amongst the plays that are in the Nebraska playbook is a page that is entitled Toe Dippers. It explains that a toe dipper is a guy who dips his toe in the water, and then if it's cold, he's not sure if he wants to get in there or not. And then it says in bold letters, at Nebraska there can be no toe dippers. In this second half, there better not be any toe dippers. There were some toe dippers on that last touchdown play. Yeah. Mr. Root, second down. Ross is short of the first down. Stuffed by the K-State defense. There's Hickman, who's been very active. The senior linebacker out of Mesquite, Texas. That's a football town. Mesquite, Texas. Bull riders, football players. Man, I think there's two Mesquite players starting on defense <laughs> for, uh, for K-State. You can't be a toe dipper and be from Mesquite. No, nah, there are no toe dippers now. <laughs> And Josh Buell, that's the other one. Sure, there's two linebackers down there from Mesquite. And here comes fake by Lord to wow. not fool wow. the Wildcats. And man, they hammered him that time, led by the Mesquite duo. Hickman and Buell bringing it on for Mesquite. The Nebraska offensive line that time did not cut off anyone. You see it backside blocking, incognito, can't pick up Buell, runs inside the block that time by Jake Anderson and gets to the play. Buell is a tackling machine. Came into the game with 86 solo tackles. He's got more solo tackles than the number two tackler has tackles in the season. Kyle Larson is fifth punt of the game. Darren Spurls, and if he fair catches, watch him put it up earlier this time. <laughs> That little controversy we want with us in the first half, a little late signal on a play. Larson, excellent punter, but uh, drives this one over Sproul's head and in to the end zone. It'll come out in the 20-yard line. A 66-yard punt. The coaches would have preferred a little shorter and out of bounds. The ABC Sports Presentation College Football is brought to you by the new Chevy Malibu and your local Chevy dealers. Singular, the wireless company that fits you best, and the principal financial group. We understand what you're working for. That's the gates there at the original entrance to the grounds here at the University of Nebraska. What a gorgeous day we've had for football. Unbelievable. Perfect passing day here in the Midwest. First down and 10. Sproles cuts back. Picked up five yards on that play before Williams brought him down. Sproles went for 201 last week, his career best, as we talked about. And that was with a 70-yard run, the first play of the third quarter. No big plays. And can't, uh, excuse me, Nebraska's defense right now cannot afford to give up another touchdown. They're not a come-from-behind team. The black shirts have to keep the offense in there. Here's Roberson firing left to Terry. First down. At the 31-yard line, Matt Ricketts, the corner, with the coverage. So, L. Roberson, he's 10 of 20 passing, and he's run for 64, and he's shaken off an elbow injury. And you can see, again, it is that elbow, and then he ran for the go-ahead touchdown. That's amazing. You can tell certain times when he throws, when he clicks that elbow, it bothers him. I'm sure there's a lot of Missouri players watching this game and thinking about their trip to Manhattan next week as Polite this time stays inbounds. And how about Williams coming back for that smash at the 49-yard line? Range for the linebacker. 
Polite pays the price, but not before he gained 19 and a first down for Kansas State because let me go back to finish up that Missouri uh, thought. Of course, Missouri and K-State, if this score holds up, K-State wins here, they would play for the North Division title next week. Yep. In, uh, in Manhattan. That'll think. be a battle. Brad Smith's never out of a football game. That guy. Good look at football player. Watched him for a time here today. Roberson. Now he pitches it. And that was their fumble, juggle the ball. Yes, he did. It down. The linesman says down. You can see yeah, he's got his where foot down. Romero yep. was down. Right there, he's got his foot down and played it. That's the same play run correctly where L. Roberson had no one to pitch to when he got hit before. The receiver right here is the guy that has to back up and be the pitch man. Watch it. See how he backs up? Ah, a little easier to run this play with a pitch man on the play. Yeah, the first, first <laughs> half, he looked back and uh, Marrero was about 20 yards exactly. down the field. Exactly. I'll tell you, L. Roberson, remember when he came back, was here before in 2001, he was 1 for 11 passing. He's now 11 for 21 for over 200 yards. He's having a fine game. Options to the right. Sproles. Got the first down. Out of bounds. Well, he at left, the 36-yard line. He left Barrett Rude that time, the middle linebacker, grasping for air. Rude is a very good athlete. He's lined up deeper at middle linebacker so he can make more plays tracking down those running backs. But that time, Sproles showed why that combination of quickness, shiftiness, and speed is tough to tackle. Here in the second half, the K-State offense is dominating. They now have 341 total yards of offense to 234 for Nebraska. They put 227 in the third quarter against Iowa State. Good third quarter adjustments by Kansas State. They start to march up and down the field. The black shirts badly need a stop. Sproles to the 32 yard line. And Bullocks, Josh, Josh Bullocks. Remember, there's identical twins out there, the safeties for the Corn Huskers. The two safeties are starting to get wide again, Brent, and that's going to allow that tight end to go right down the middle again, and that'll force the middle linebacker, Rude, to cover him. It's there again. Brian Casey made a pay the last time they did that, Gary. Yep. So far the second half, Kansas State with 93 yards to Nebraska's 18 to follow up on that point. Scrolls is short of the first down as Ira Cooper makes a big play. Number 11 goes off now to the far side. Well, Roberson on this third down is such a dangerous player when he gets inside to about third and three, gets inside third and five. You just don't know what to do with him. He can keep it, option it, throw it. Yep. Man, multi-talented quarterback. The wide safeties again. He just pulled back. Fired for the first down. He put it in Polite's hands inside the 25-yard line. Did not hesitate. It's just so dangerous. So no fun. matter what you call over there, yep. Gary, they can go to something else. That's what a senior quarterback, an athlete, can do with you. L. Roberson's been focused in on this game ever since the Texas loss. He's been on fire. He came into this game with 17 straight quarters without throwing an interception. Thrown a couple picks. But he's thrown the fastball and the touch pass all game. Three and a half minutes in the third. K-State up seven and driving again behind L. Roberson. Standing tall, got all kinds of time with a great fake. He's to the 21-yard line. Williams again makes a stop. And, of course, time permitting, coming up on the uh, thrifty Carvino postgame report, John, Terry, and Craig will dissect the day's biggest games, and we have had some. They were trying to go to the tight end on the play-action pass, and he got jammed on the play. It was there. Look at the wide safeties. Okay, the tight end is right here. He gets jammed on the player. They would have got him down the middle. Look at Roberson. Please, where are you? And he had to scramble. Here's a second down. Wildcats need eight. Must reach the 14-yard line. Good protective pocket and a bad throw. Into the ground. Terry, the intended receiver, and it wasn't even close. Bullocks was defending the big play wideout for Kansas State that time. Nebraska did a nice job. They didn't put pressure on the quarterback, but of handling those crossing routes again. Very well coached. They looked everybody up and forced a bad throw. 
Joe Ream is loosening himself up just. In case they don't make this third down, he can come on for a field goal attempt. 107 18. I'd say domination. K State splits the field to the left. Nebraska tries to blitz. It's picked up. They hit the wide out for a first down. They come to Davin Dennis, his first reception, and the sophomore from St. James, Louisiana, muscles for the first down across the 15. L. Roberson knew he had a gimme here. Nebraska busted in the secondary. Two guys blitzed. Only one guy was supposed to. Actually, two players for Kansas State was wide open. That was a gimme on the first down. Mental mistake by the Nebraska secondary, and Bo Pelini's given it to the secondary. On first down, the option, Roberson keeps it. Cutting him off is Williams again. He's a one-man yeah, he defensive is. game. Trevor Johnson took away the pitch on that play, too. There was nowhere to go for, for uh, L. Roberson at the time. He's lucky if he'd have pitched it, it would have been right to pick number 88. Wouldn't be surprised if Snyder didn't uh, call a pass play here, Gary, on I think second should... down and long, huh? That or quarterback draw. Well, he's got the eye backs in there. They wouldn't do quarterback draw from eye backs. That's a basic power run formation. Yes, he does. Go back in front of Sproles. And here comes Sproles. He's short of the 10-yard line. Williams again, and now this puts him in that third down situation. So the conservative play was hoping to pop it in the middle. Didn't quite swim open like he wanted. I think the way his defense is playing right now, he wouldn't mind three points. That's, uh, that's a pretty solid point observation rather than risk yes. an interception because remember Roberson with that gun has tried to force it he a couple has. times. He had the one Bullock's drop. Remember yeah, his own man yeah, knocked it out of his hand? That's a very good point. Bill might be thinking exactly along your lines. Yeah, the old quarterback, he gets one every now and then. <laughs> Watch him run a cross <laughs> double pass. The linesman's going to stop it before they get it off. <laughs> linesman's got a timeout. Been called by Kansas State. And uh, the clock was apparently running down. Brian Mobleson, our ever alert spotter, picked that up for us. So. Coming up for K State. Total domination by the Wildcats. Third and six, and K State is eight of 12 on third downs here today. Roberson has time, fires incomplete. No, he had him too. Threw the ball perfectly, threw the ball low. Either his guy or nobody got it. And I don't know if it was dropped or skipped or what. A nice play, but it was a nice, safe throw. You think uh, maybe Al Roberson went over there and lobbied a little bit for that play? I think so. Yep, Let me I use that too. right arm of mine. <laughs> Joe Reed. Now, remember the last time he slid one right. He missed to the right. He was wide right. So he's 0 for 1. And the red shirt's trying to get him to do it again. This is a 27-yarder now for Reem. He pulls it left, but he slipped it through that oh time. My. He almost <laughs> overcompensated. That's like one of Gary Danielson's drives on a dog leg left. <laughs> Backup ball on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and start, usually when they start out left, they hook. That just That's what I thought. It, it slid back. I thought I was just going to shoot. I know. Uh, here it is, coming right at you this time. Good protection. Ball starts at the left upright and just scoots it inside. Woo. Close, huh? But it's a 10-point lead now for K-State. And a reminder that tonight ESPN and ESPN2 have two great college games. Uh, first at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Heisman home for Larry Fitzgerald of the Pittsburgh Panthers take on West Virginia in the backyard brawl. And on ESPN at 7.45 Eastern, the LSU Tigers continue their quest for a national title as they visit Alabama. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And gonna, here. Going to stay here in Lincoln to watch the games with me? I got my chauffeur, Bob Goodman, <laughs> ready to get me to that Omaha Air Force. So I, could, hey, I, got, I got an appearance in Las yeah, Vegas. Let's I do that. Get, hey, think about this for Kansas no. State. They've never come within seven as Bill Snyder as the coach, and they got a 10-point lead. Picked up on the big hop by Davis. Adding yards to his record, but not the best decision. He's going to the 15-yard line. And uh, let's take a closer look at K-State coach Bill Snyder. 
My favorite professional sports team uh, when I was growing up as a, as a youngster in Boston Celtics. My favorite actor would uh, probably be uh, Bob Hope. My favorite movie has been uh, Pinocchio. Now you, now you see, folks, that's the last time he went to movies. Bob Hope and Pinocchio. He's been working X's and O's ever since then. That's what it takes to turn this program around, right? Now we know the secret to the success of the resurgence of Kansas State. Lord keeps it, breaks to daylight, 35, and McGill forces him out of bounds. Check that Randy Jordan. That was number nine, Randy Jordan forcing him out of bounds on that far side. He's beautiful with the ball when he has it, isn't he? Coming out, once he gets down there, he's got great body league. He takes a lot of yardage with each stride, shifts the ball around. How many quarterbacks you see shift the ball around? He had Ibeck written all over him, but as uh, Frank told us, he'd play quarterback if he played Ibeck. Interesting to see if an NFL team gives him a shot as a, uh, a running back or a receiver. First and 10. Incomplete, and we check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Brent, the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT Update. Purdue and Ohio State, Kyle Orton to Taylor Stubblefield, who gets it inside the 15-yard line. We go to fourth down. Field goal is blocked, and it remains a 6-6 tie. Buckeyes boil them in. Ah, USC just groaned in agony. They were just <laughs> pulling for that Purdueski to get it in the end zone on that pass play. They are so fearful the Buckeyes might jump past them. Lord is going to be thrown down at the 36-yard line by Josh Buell. I, I cannot believe, Gary, I, this total domination by both the offense and the defense of K-State this half. Yeah, I think, uh, remember, we talked about either Nebraska's going to have to throw the ball or this rush defense, this front seven, is going to eventually catch up in the Nebraska running game. Without being able to open up the field, those linebackers have now geared in, and they're stopping them. The final second. Welcome back to the fourth quarter. A 10-point outburst by K-State in the third has given them a 10-point lead. Jamal Lord, the senior quarterback, his last home game. Oh, he had a tight end Harry and wide open, and he threw a one-hopper that time, down by 10 points. And uh, so, Gary, this senior class, there's 34 seniors here. Right. They've only lost two home games since they enrolled, and they're in danger here of losing number three. Uh, they are. It's a good Kansas State team, there's no doubt. And I, and I do think Nebraska is improving from what I saw last year. But they can't make any big plays in the passing game, and it's catching up to them. Yeah, it, particularly just like that yes. last one. They had Harry and breaking wide open. And they it, had a 25-yard gain on Right, it. and if you don't, a good defense will zero in on you, and that's exactly what's happened right now. As a result, Kyle Larson back to punt again. We'll check out again his hang time. Got off a boomer and Sproul says, let's go. The reverse. Here comes Lawson. Looking for a lane on the left. Down to the 37-yard line. I got to give uh, <laughs> give it up here for Gary Danielson. He said, Brent, watch 82. They had it on the last punt. Yeah, they did. And it was kicked into the end zone. Remember that? This time they had it on again. And when you're trying to win your first game in, what, 1968 here in Lincoln, why not run the reverse on a punt? Beautifully executed. It is hard to believe in all the things that Snyder has accomplished in the Big 12 and when he coached even before the formation of the conference that they've never won a game here in Lincoln. But they've got a chance here today with L. Roberson leading the way. He's passed for over 200 yards. Pump fake got him out going down the sideline. Got it. Touchdown, Kansas State. Terry. James Terry, the senior from Homestead, Florida, takes it 63 yards. And now K-State has a chokehold on the Cornhuskers. 
They've thrown three hitches out here during the game, coming down. Each time, the corners come closer and closer. Now it's a hitch and go. Perfect. Doesn't overthrow him, catches the ball. I thought Bullocks had a shot at him, but he pulled up on the play. And all of a sudden, two plays, a reverse and a hitch and go for a touchdown. So James Terry up over 1,000 yards. Ream tacks on the extra point, and it's 24-7. Terry is the forgotten outstanding wide receiver in the Big 12. He is one of the best. How about that stop and go? Hello, Enzo. All over the place, just dominating. They well, they're quick. Yeah, they're quick. Yeah, they're so much check, check this out. That coach stoops us. When college game days on campus, you gotta step it up. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, 10:30 Saturday mornings on ESPN. Meet Jay, one of the hosts of Cold Pizza, the new morning show on ESPN2. Jay gets to talk sports and hang around with three beautiful women. Tough gig. Join Jay, Kit, Thea, and Leslie starting Monday, October 20th at 7 a.m. Cold Pizza. It's a morning show with everything. Don't forget about Kit, one of the hosts of Cold Pizza, the new morning show on ESPN2. Kit's wild and unpredictable. Oh, yeah, did we mention the show is live? Join Kit, Thea, Leslie, and Jay starting Monday, October 20th at 7 a.m. Cold Pizza. It's a morning show with everything. They say I look at the ball the way a linebacker looks for a sack. The way a batter looks at a pitch. Wow, they said. You hit that thing just like a puck, Jerry. But I'm from Wisconsin, and I used to play hockey. So I take that as a compliment. Watch Jerry Kelly in the PGA Tour's best this season on ABC. Here's textbook mechanics by an official watching the foot and the sideline as Terry comes extremely close with the right foot. But as you can see, the official never took his eye off his foot, and he had the best view in the house. Davis says, let's go again. And he's short of the 20-yard line. Well, U.S. Open champ Jimmy Furyk and Justin Leonard team up to represent the U.S. against teams from 23 other nations. The World Golf Championships, World Cup. Final round action tomorrow, live at 1 Eastern on ABC. So the United States team, second place, going into tomorrow's final round. And now Solich and the offense have got to come up with some quick scores. That's better than our baseball team. I can't believe what I was reading. First down and dead toss play. Here's Ross. And Ross is brought down by Houchett again. On the day, Ross has put up 83 yards. They make it 85 yards. You can see it. Zero passing yards in the second half for Nebraska. I don't see, see how you move against this. Very experienced, quick defense, very well coached by Bobby Elliott if you can't throw the ball. A quiet, subdued crowd in Lincoln. One of the quietest gatherings I've ever experienced in a football game. Lord steps away, fires high, and quickly. Very interesting, Nebraska, second and long, going with two tight ends, one-man pass routes. I mean, there's really not a lot to, to throw the ball to. A lack of confidence in the passing game from, you know, maybe deservedly so, I mean, from Jamal Lord, but when you're behind 24-7, you gotta let her go. Kansas State has not won here in Lincoln since 1968. Lynn Dickey was the quarterback that day. It was a 12-0 shutout. Two tight ends. Lord. In trouble on the move. 
Slips free, sideline, heaves it downfield, intercepted at the 34-yard line. It is picked off by James McGill, and K-State will take over. A bootleg pass, third and long. Kansas State had no part. Look at that. Isolation bootleg pass. Actually, it was a pocket pass, to be fair. Runs out of the pocket because of the pr protection problems and then sells a jump ball. Now, he does have his big tight end, Heron, down there, Herion down there, and says, can't my big guy get it? But ball was slightly overthrown, and it was a mistake at this point of the game that's really costing him. Travis Wilson is set behind Roberson. And Snyder wants to go to work on the clock. And Roberson picks up almost 10 yards here early in the fourth quarter. And we check in down below with our Jack Aroot. Well, let's see if we can put into perspective Coach Snyder's tenure at Kansas State. Let's take a look at the 11 predecessors before Coach Snyder arrived. Look at their career record compared to Coach Snyder's. And how about bowl appearances? One in 68 years, and then Coach Snyder arrives in 10 in the last 14 years. That's because the last movie he saw was Pinocchio. That's why he's been working. <laughs> First down. Roberson again keeping the game in his hands. He's thrown for 276 yards and run for another 81 yards here today. He has talked it a little bit earlier in the week, and he's backed it up. Walk and when, the talk and walk the walk, And baby. you know what? I, I think that says something that their team, you know, Kansas State coming into Lincoln, can you really go into a place like this if you don't believe your leader believes he can win here? That's a very good point. But also at the top of the day, Gary, I think you made the big comment, the fact that Roberson had experience yes. in Lincoln. Ben he here. came in here two years ago. It was a disastrous performance. Uh, Roberson couldn't do a thing that day, and here is Sproles who has scored a touchdown. But you know, as we talk about the Big 12, and of course, the team who's everybody's number one in Oklahoma today, beating up on Baylor, next week we'll go down to Lubbock and we'll watch the big Sooner machine against Texas Tech, and then the Big 12 championship in Kansas City the night of December 6th. Now, USC is number two. They play Arizona, UCLA, Oregon State. Tough to improve your strength of schedule. LSU folks, they can really improve their strength of schedule if they run the table. And Ohio State, Purdue today, and Michigan, the big one, next week. So those are the games remaining for the Final Four, at least the Final Four as we see it right now. Should those teams get knocked off, then it opens the door for Texas and Michigan to come barging in with two losses and an unbeaten TCU. So some great games still ahead of us down the road. Absolutely, big game for USC today, Brent. Washington State needed to win for a quality win and Washington State looked like they were winning big. That will help USC. Yeah, that's big. Second down, Roberson at Kansas State on the clock, Sproles his tackle. Now, let's show you the BCS standings presented by Allstate, and we will show you the point here. Clear cut number one, lowest point total in history, 1.68. Remember, the lowest wins. Now, the differential, as far as USC sitting number two is concerned, Ohio State is not even a point and a half back. LSU with almost seven points that they need to make out. You say, what are these point totals? Well, the polls, that's one point. The seven or so computers, that's another point. Strength of schedule. Uh, you know, you need a mathematician yeah. to explain it. But let me say that with Ohio State tied at 6-6, everybody in Southern California right now is pulling, is pulling for Purdue to get the job done. 24-7. We've got a timeout. In 1868, an American tradition was beginning, and Pacific Life was founded, both built on principles of persistence, performance, and strength. 135 years later, those beliefs still guide Pacific Life. It's how we help so many businesses and individuals reach their financial goal. Here at the football stadium. All right, 10 and a half minutes to go. Here's Sproles. Penalty fly. And we have not seen many penalties today, have we, folks? That was a first down run by K-State, but uh, 
but there's the flag. As a matter of fact, I don't have any for Nebraska. George, is that right? Confirmation. Well, that body language says it's on. Well, how could you have blocking below the waist when the receiver was so close to the formation? It's going to be motion here. I guess it's who they're going to call it on. Is the wide receiver coming? Well, that's a, that's a tough one. I guess when you come from outside the formation in motion, you're not allowed to clip. They're blocked below the waist on the end man of the line of scrimmage. You know, Brent, we asked the officials about that, and I don't remember an explanation like that. 24-7, <laughs> Snyder and the Wildcats lead it. That was a big play because that was an, a first down. Would have taken another three minutes off the clock, and it was way away from the point of attack. It would have had no factor on the play. Oh, Snyder can feel this one. Then we, uh, there you are. Four is all we've got against K-State. Not a single one against Nebraska. <laughs> and uh, Snyder, we are told, just uh, reminded the linesman of that fact. <laughs> Third down. Roberson fires. Got it. Touchdown, Terry. They ran the post. And Terry broke free for a 37-yarder, his second of the game. And now Kansas State can taste its first win in Lincoln since 1968. I wonder if Lynn Dickey's gonna pop one open here. Absolutely, get out the champagne. Because Fabian Washington that time was beaten by Terry, and L. Roberson just threw it on a clothesline, 40 yards right to Terry. So Joe Ream, the Wichita Junior, makes it 31-7. Beautifully designed play here again. Inside guy is going to come out. The outside guy is going to cross, and here's the player that gets beat. Watch it. Come in, they go out, they go out, then they cross. Watch him cross right there. Now look at all that open space right there, and the ball is delivered like a strike. tied at seven at the half and Kansas State with 24 unanswered points here in the second half reflecting the quality of not only the athletes but the coaching staff who put together the adjustments as they come out and dominate offensively and defensively over Nebraska Davis coming out from his own end zone And he is down at the 23. You know, we spoke earlier about the super fans and the great fans here at Nebraska. Folks, how about Art Friesen? A season ticket holder for 60 plus years in his most memorable game back in 1923 when the Huskers beat the Irish. And he will be 102 years old next January 7th in advance, Art. We wish you nothing but many more seasons here with your beloved Cornhuskers. What a wonderful, Absolutely. wonderful story. How many of you folks out there can say the best, best game I ever saw was back in 1923? <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, that's a wonderful story. Lord, completes for a first down, 11 yards. Oh, the Buckeyes, do I hear the magic word, John Saunders? What's up in Columbus, lad? The magic word is defense because Ohio State's defense does it again. Kyle Orton coughs up the ball on the goal line. Mike Kudla recovers it for the touchdown. No offensive touchdowns, but a 13-6 lead for the Buckeyes. Ah, who needs an offense job? Bring on those Wolverines. I'm just kidding. That goes Lord now. Incomplete. It was uh, dropped at the 48-yard line. Uh, Gary, there's a group you really want to give high marks. I really do. I haven't talked about them enough. There's the guys right here. Tackle, guard, center, ta guard, tackle, right there. All of them. Clary, Johnson, Leckie, Lilja, and Doty have not given up a sack in this game. Rovers thrown for, Roberson has thrown for over 300 yards, and Kansas State has run for close to 200 yards. What a job those guys have done. Now. Gary, two of those five are from one state. 
Would you like to guess the state? Obviously, it's not Kansas, or I wouldn't be asking uh, you the trivia question. Let's see. Where are you from? <laughs> now Montana? think about it. Montana? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Deflected, incomplete. Now, think about it now. They've got some great athletes. We've talked about Mesquite today. Texas. You huh? got it. Wow. Nick Leckie is from Grapevine, Texas, and Clary is from Mansfield, Texas. Two of their five offensive line starters. Well, here's something for you, Gary. Spend the night with Britney Spears and go places the camera shouldn't. Who writes this copy? <laughs> Britney Spears in the zone Monday night at 8, 7 Central and after football on the West Coast. Go places the camera shouldn't. That's shameful. <laughs> Third down. Lord, going deep and out of bounds. I, I've seen the pictures of Britney. Where else is there to go? <laughs> uh, the line of the day. All right. Well, you know, Kansas State has just done it with the second half. We've talked about all the time here. Punt for Nebraska. One thing, though, you got to take out of this game, and I do know they have a tough game to go get against Missouri. Could go either way. But I think Kansas State has a much better chance of giving Oklahoma a game in the Big 12 championship than this version of this Nebraska team. Well, here's Larson. I do want to make one follow-up to that as Sproles catches it at the 15. There's one thing you might be overlooking, and that would be Missouri has played Oklahoma pretty tough oh, yeah. with Brad Smith. Well, that's so, true. You know, and they've got a chance. And, uh, now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary. Second half touchdown. Roberson on the caper. Roberson to Terry working the sideline. The post. Terry again. Homestead, Florida speed. Taking it to the house for the Wildcats. Speaking now of that K-State game in Manhattan, and won't that be fun for K-State fans? They've won 10 in a row against Missouri. Last season at Columbia, it was 38-0, Kansas State. I dare say they're gonna be a big favorite. Thirty-one seven. Well, the way I look at it, you, and you may be right. Maybe Missouri has a better shot, but Kansas no, State. No, I didn't mean that. I just, oh. no, I just want to make sure. Both that teams. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't, I don't want, travel. I, get enough mail. <laughs> you know, I go to the St. Louis Airport. I don't want to, you know, see those people in there. I, I love the way this mix of this team is for Kansas State. Now, maybe it's a whole different league with Oklahoma. I'll admit that, but at least they have two weapons a pass yeah. and a run no Gary I, when you compare these two teams I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me I totally agree with you that because of I think the quarterback yeah. as much as yeah. anything yeah. at least he might be able to stick in the game and Brad Smith the same way with that tremendous Oklahoma defense yeah the, the challenge for both for Kansas State against Oklahoma I, I think their offense will work decently uh -huh. it's can you match up with those receivers I mean they just come at you in waves and I don't know you know there was no challenge here for the defensive secondary for Kansas State third down and four and Roberson swings it out to the right he had to stay in bounds and go down right at the first down marker and uh, yeah, T.J. Hollowell. <laughs> Time permitting, coming up on the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John Terry and Craig, they will uh, they'll tell you what happened in Columbus today with Ohio State leading by seven after the defense scored for them. And how about Georgia whitewashing Auburn today? You know, poor Auburn. They had Mississippi beaten last week in that. I felt so hey, badly for that pass. receiver <laughs> dropping the ball in the end zone. After he caught the screen pass to get it all the way down exactly. there, too. Yeah. You know, Georgia's a team that went through a lot of injuries. They may be playing their best football of the year right now as they come back from those injuries. Yeah, that's a good point. Right at the mark, wasn't got it. There's a lot of good receivers that you mentioned in the Big 12 this year. And right now, Terry is showing James Terry that he's one of the guys that should be mentioned. I mean, Rashawn Woods, uh, Mark Clayton's had a brilliant year, and Roy Williams, of course, the freak, but James Terry has put on a show here against Nebraska. Yeah, look, if you make the change to today, yeah. and uh, good work by Graphics. Yeah, did we, he jumps up there with Rashawn Woods, so Dr. Wait, graphics was all over that one. Did we make the change for Clayton yet, though? <laughs> no, you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to be screamed at down there, you know what I mean? There we go. And uh, L. Roberson, so it's a big, big day for Kansas State and its fans. 
And uh, Patrick Camacho out of Montreal, Canada. Big basketball down there making the stop. Jack? Brent, it wasn't always sweet times for L. Roberson at K-State. In fact, in the early days, he actually told me he thought about transferring. But when he thought that, he would dial up his grandma Mary back home, and she would say, no, you don't. You stay to finish what you started. Grandma Mary comes to a lot of the games. I had the opportunity to meet her at Texas, and believe me, when she talks, you listen. And now Grandma Mary, Jack, didn't you tell me she doesn't watch the game? She walks down when he's got the ball and doesn't watch him? Something like that. Jack was telling me some story when we were down there. Yeah, basically, Brent, what happens is she has never She's seen play play. L. Roberson play an offensive down. She'll sit in the grandstands, and as soon as the team... ...goes on offense, she goes to the nearest exit. She hides in there until one of her daughters will come back down and say, Coast is clear, Grandma, they're back on defense. Now, now do you think she was watching today, Jack, on television? Is that different? <laughs> They'd be in there in person. Would she be you know watching what? We'll two? have to check with her if they go all the way to the Big 12. Maybe we'll get Grandma Mary on and find out if she did when she's watching on TV. Jack Root brings you the next chapter of Grandma Mary. Second down. 6-12 to go. Michigan leading Northwestern, we see. 41-10. That's in the fourth quarter. So the Wolverines are ready for that showdown. And uh, Florida State trying to come back. So let's check in with John Saunders. Uh, John, how the Seminoles doing? Well, they're doing great on offense. It's defense they're having problems with, but so is NC State. Chris Ricks, 14 yards to PK Sam, who just gets one foot down in the end zone. And they've regained the lead at 34 to 30, but again, NC State has started to march. You know, I can't believe, John, they, they're not even out of the third quarter in that game. And uh, here, Gary, we've only got 5.30 to go. I think uh, Mr. Goodrich and I will make that airplane uh, <laughs> easy. Here's... Roberson, oh. and oh, it's picked off, what are they intercepted. Doing? Man, as they went far side, and Pat Ricketts was there, and uh, What are they wow. doing? It's a crazy call. 31 to seven in the football game right here. Throwing clear across the field. You've got a huge lead, the game's over, just run it and get out of here, and you throw a pass. Well, I guess it might not make any difference, but uh, I wouldn't want to give the other team the ball at all. Well, let's see if Lord and Nebraska can get something going in the second half. They've been shut out. Lord breaks free. And he'll be out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, here's an update on the singular wireless poll. What team has been the most disappointing this year? And uh, a lot of backing for the Fighting Irish. But the last time I looked, they were beating up on BYU th today. Auburn second, Penn State, Texas A&M, and uh, Arizona State. Kind of interesting. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, I, I would have to say Notre Dame, though, has been a bit of a disappointment to me. I thought they would improve a bit this year. Yeah, I, I can see that. Second down. Now it's third down. I guess so when you have a quarterback that's gone seven for 23, you don't mind giving him the ball back. Kansas State's defense has stopped the run all day. There's been a few flips, but they put pressure on the quarterback, a huge turnover in the third quarter, and then once they knew there was no passing attack, they jumped all over the option game here for Nebraska. Brett Bielma has coordinated this defense perfectly and coaches the Nebraska coaches have said they are so well coached third down oh, oh. going for it all incomplete wow that could have been caught couldn't it, it sure could have that was a perfect throw you got to come up with some of those good defense Cedric Williams is right there but I thought this ball could have been caught by Flewellen well hey, it was a back back shoulder play Oh, good great play, play yeah, by good Williams. play by Williams. He knocked the ball loose, didn't he? Oh, he had it up on his yep, shoulder, sure and then he came back on that second ball. Well, what a great play by that young Remember, man. Remember, uh, Williams was the other cornerback last year on the other opposite side from uh, Newman. Newman, and Newman is yes. a heck of a player for the Dallas Cowboys, and they've got one coming up Sunday night against New England, the, uh, the former Buddies Bowl, Parcells and Belichick. <laughs> Here's your fourth down after the turnover. Still five yards to go for the Huskers. 
Oh, gonna go back Same play. Him. Williams has got it. I don't understand that. Williams picked it off at the six yard line. So Cedric Williams with back to back plays on the corner. One he knocks free and the second one he picks off. Well, I just hope this wasn't the designed play because that's a tough throw for a quarterback to make on fourth down. Look at forced out to the sideline. No chance for a completion there. And Cedric Williams back to back plays great defense. At halftime, we told you Darren Sproles, with only 38 total yards, needed to get going. Well, he got it to 89, but uh, L. Roberson took over the football game. And uh, when you have a hot quarterback throwing for over 300 yards, maybe you don't need your start running back. Exactly. So Roberson at K-State will bring it out. Number three keeps it in his hands. That'll be coming up now. We'll pick our mad move of the week. All of you think about it now. What was the mad moment of this football game? Not the biggest play now, not the flashiest, but what was the real mad moment that we had here today? Okay. Here it comes, folks. The mad move of the day. Take you to the opening coin toss. And L. Roberson went to the center of the field and said, all right, black shirts, let's bring it on. You've been yapping here for a year now. How are you going to get even in Lincoln? Well, I'm coming to your house, and I'm taking away a W back to Manhattan. There ain't nothing madder than coming to Lincoln and saying that, folks. That's your mad move of this week. Absolutely. Didn't back up one step, did he? I think, I think everybody at the sideline watched his body language, saw it, and said, I'll tell you what, we may lose the football game, but L. Roberson is ready. Scrolls. Let's take a look at the uh, Big 12 scoreboard. Here today, we already told you that Missouri heads toward that showdown with a big win over Texas A&M, Oklahoma State over Kansas, Colorado playing better down the stretch. Yeah, They'll host Nebraska. That'll be a tough game for Nebraska. And Oklahoma 41, Baylor 3. So Baylor ran up to score. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, hey, uh, I want to ask you a little question. We're here in Big 12 country, and instead of making the Nebraska fans a little bit mad, I'm going to go at Texas a little bit. Okay. You think a team that doesn't win their conference championship <laughs> should play for the national championship? You've already done that to Nebraska <laughs> a couple of years ago now. Okay. <laughs> they got that opportunity. You're obviously talking about a scenario in which all four of those one-loss teams lose, and it comes down to a showdown between Texas and Michigan. Let's assume that Oklahoma runs the table right. as to who would go in and play them. I don't think I'm Texas not fighting on that. One. I don't think Texas. I like go. those people in Austin. I'm not fighting on that one. I like those horns down there. I, I advocated a rule change that if you don't win the conference championship, you can't go. And they declined to do that. So I said the possibility could happen again, and it could. Well, you know why they didn't do that? I don't know because why. Of money. Because what's wrong with Michigan no, being in it? Well, here's the deal. Here's oh, they the wanted deal. their conference. You get in your it. conference champion yeah. gets the well, other spot. I'll tell you this. If Kansas State or Missouri beats Oklahoma, Texas, even if they're number four, won't go. You can't have two teams go. Third down. Scrolls out to the 11-yard line. Number three here today, Gary. He was uh, certainly K-State's MVP, wasn't he? He sure was. He's been here before. He went one for 11, but he came back focused, throwing the ball. Play action passes, throwing off the wrong foot, firing the Rockets in warm-ups. You could tell he had his fastball. And I think if Bill Snyder could have one decision back the whole year, it would be to play L. Roberson a bit in that Marshall game. Even if they lost the game, he needed him to get a few snaps before he went to Texas when he was so rusty. They could have beat Texas that day with this L. Roberson. Ten years from now, he's an Aflac trivia question. Name the last two quarterbacks to win games for <laughs> Kansas State in Lincoln. Lynn Dickey and L. Roberson. <laughs> 
Well, we want to thank the SIDs. Man, we get so much help around the country. We couldn't do it without them shipping us the stats and numbers. Here in Nebraska, nobody any better than Chris Anderson. Thanks a lot, Chris. Even makes dinner reservations, sometimes not on the right night. But, Chris, thanks for all the help. And for Kansas State, Gary Bowman, their SID. Right, standing in the Kansas State end zone. Try to block this one, aren't they? I have never heard Lincoln is quiet. Is Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Nor have I seen as many big red fans head for the exits early. This is this is really rare for me to experience this here in Lincoln. Have you ever witnessed a loss here? Yes, I did Texas. Uh, Major Applewhite really? oh, that's, had a big yep, win. Yep. Uh, I've been here when Oklahoma has won, mm. and these fans sat right down to the last snap. Mm. Ah, Purdue must be coming back. Let's check in. John, what's going on? Brent, they pulled one out of your old playbook, the old Statue of Liberty play. Kyle Orton with the big pass. Gives it to Gerard Boyd. Touchdown. Extra point good. Tied at 13 apiece. When your game is done, we'll take people out there for bonus coverage. Hey, John, can't we go now? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> We've got 353 to go here. <laughs> so, if Purdue wins that game and beats Indiana, they're co-Big Ten champs, right? If John puts it on the other monitor, yeah, I'll you'll tell watch you folks it. what's going on. Not only will he watch it, he'll do play-by-play. <laughs> <play. laughs> 3.53 here. Uh, the victory recipe, Gary, remember you had that at the beginning of the game, how'd that turn? Yeah, there was three things I thought might do it. Must tackle well, both teams tackled well, but let's look, the key one obviously had to be the quarterback. The quarterback is the one that came through. 403 total yards for L. Roberson and a tough day for Jamal Lord, seven for 25. They responded to adversity in this football game. I think they did. 7-7, they had a field goal, miss, turnover in the end zone. They just kept playing, and they eventually turned the corner. Penalty flag again. And Bright's running out of the back of the end zone. Steps it out. They took the safety, but there is a penalty flag. I think Nebraska was offside that time. was a safety and Bill is asking now for clarification. Offside you're right Gary. There's the uh, the preliminary down there. No I don't know why you'd want to go again if you're going to take a safety already. Why would you want to. Only because of the clock. That it by the way is the first Nebraska penalty of this game. Coach, what do you want? Coach, what do you want? <laughs> Take the penalty. Come on, Coach, you're cutting into the Ohio State time. <laughs> Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, replay, fourth down. In their school's history, the first road victory against a higher-ranked opponent, 71 games. I'll tell you what's misleading about stuff like that, folks, and I'm not picking on the graphic. Kansas State came in here the favorite in this football game today. Yeah, that's true. They were the favorite in this game. Slight, but they were. And you want to kill time. So now you take the safety, and you get it to 343, you get a little daylight, and uh, now they'll free kick it from the 20. So as they get set up to do that, let's thank, let's thank the folks around the ABC Sports, executive producer, of course, Mike Pearl, the senior producer, Bob Toms, the coordinating producer of ABC's College Football, the producer here of today's game, Bob Goodrich. Director, Larry Cam. Nice job down in the truck along with our TD, Monty Poling. Our associate producer, Drew Kaliski, who produced the third quarter. The associate director, Brian Fay. And our production assistants, 
Dr. Graphics and the Sun Devil herself, Marla Keithley. Technical manager, Mark Towie, and the production manager here this week, Jenny McIver. Our director of production, Mark Loomis. Our stage manager up here, the Yankee himself, old WW Wellington and Wilmore. Now he provided some eats at halftime, folks. Some good old Nebraska sandwiches, and they were terrific. Mm. One of the best halftime snacks we've had. Way to go, Yankee. Frank Solich was giving a little vote of confidence in the paper today. That'll go away tomorrow. I know. That's how this thing works, doesn't it, with these major teams like this? Only as good as your last performance, and this was not a good performance, folks. Frank might want to stay away from talk radio and the newspapers next week because it's not going to be pleasant. Here's Davis from the 11. Out to the 39-yard uh, line. Josh Davis on the return. Bill Snyder was very upset with the officials. He felt they should have started the clock when they started the play clock after the penalty. And he was very upset with how the clock was handled after that penalty. And I heard him say to the official, I know I'm right. So that'll be an interesting one, won't it? The 12 commissioner will hear about that. His safety was not as dramatic as Belichick's. No. But he had it in the arsenal. <laughs> All those coaches have got the safeties now. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have a safety in your playbook. First down and 10. Throw it down to 34 yard line. Ouch it. Really tough on the Nebraska offensive line. And I know this is how Nebraska's built at this point in a little bit of a transition for Nebraska's offense. But when you're trying to play action pass block against a defensive line that has their ears pinned back coming after the quarterback, it's very difficult to give good pass protection. Boy, Cal really beating up on Washington out west today. What happened to that Washington team? Complete. And uh, was going to step out of bounds, but uh, Flewellen stayed inbounds, I believe. And uh, here's today's Chevrolet players of the game. Certainly uh, no surprise as far as K-State is concerned. L. Roberson, 403 total yards. And Demorio Williams, the Nebraska linebacker, had 14 tackles, two of them for a loss. L. Roberson almost played a perfect football game. Remember he had that bad elbow. He threw one pass late over the middle to get it intercepted. He won at the end of the half, no big deal. He was trying to get something, but almost a perfect game on the road for L. Roberson. 24 unanswered points. Roberson led Kansas State too, and uh, well, I know who doesn't want to watch the uh, Michigan, I mean Ohio State Purdue game. The officials. They're just as soon finish this one off I mean, right here. They got chains and they got <laughs> flags and we've got discussions. That's and close enough. Give them a first down. Let's go. We got airplanes. We got close enough. One inch. There we go. And that's their job. I'm, 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 I'm just kind of trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing up here. Actually, the crew's done a pretty good job. Yes, today. they have. As have most of the officials we've been around this year. Have you noticed? I thought the, the play they made where they actually called the penalty on Sproles was a good job of fixing a mistake while it was happening. As a matter of fact, the biggest mistake that we yeah, saw up here yeah. was the fact that Lord's knee appeared to be down on the Nebraska touchdown. Right. It was when you really go back and think about it. In, in slow motion, it was down. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Third down and inches. There's the first down. The fumble. Fumble. Ball comes loose. Kansas State football. Yeah. Oh, that could be the bitter end of, uh, of a tough day here. Recovered by Josh Buell. I guess that inch meant something, huh? Wow. How's uh, Nebraska reload now to go play Colorado? That's got to be tough. And with an off week. Because that's not till Thanksgiving weekend. It's really going to test the strength, the inner strength of Jamal Lord now. Or do you play Joe Daly, next year's freshman quarterback? One game to get him ready for next year. Do you go and look at someone else for the last game? Maybe not a bad idea. And we check in with John in New York. John? Well, in the SEC, Georgia against Auburn. Jason Campbell has plenty of time, but the ball gets tipped as it's released, bounces around a couple of times into the hands of Odell Thurman, 
who goes 99 yards, starts to tiptoe, starts to run out of gas, but gets it into the end zone for the touchdown, 26 0. Georgia's still in that chase for some big honors this year. So Kansas State eliminating Nebraska here today. And Sproles breaks for the end zone. Nebraska with the angle, and they'll take him out of bounds at the six-yard line. Darren Sproles puts him over 100, and it marks the 10th straight game that Nebraska has given up 100 yards and lost to a receipt to a running back. Just bounces it out this time. Supposed to go to the left, ends up going to the outside to the right. Look at that quickness. It's going to be interesting to see what this guy does in the NFL. Small, choppy runner. Will he be able to play and be a factor in the NFL? You know, I don't I don't say no to anybody anymore in the NFL. Who knows? You exactly. Know? Exactly. What that win is, you know, I mean it was oh, you a small, watch him. He's a tackle It's machine. unbelievable. They part of that Dallas Cowboy defense. Bill Parcells with a superb defense. Newman, of course, has added to it. Williams and, uh, this is a touchdown as they go to a power back. Saba takes it on in for the score with a minute and a half to go. Boy, what could have been for Kansas State this year? You know, they lose to Marshall at home. If L. Roberson doesn't get hurt, you think Kansas State might have made a run at the national championship? Well, they were supposed to. Yes. They were up to five yes. after their opening game win. And everybody touted them as a possible national champion this year, depending on what would happen, of course, against Oklahoma. They still, of course, could wind up playing Oklahoma if they can beat Missouri right. next week in Manhattan. They'll wrap up the Big 12 North and head on in on the night of December 6th as Ream tacks on another extra point. 38 to 9, Kansas State. 38 to 9, Kansas State with the lead. That one is just about wrapped up as they'll try and go against Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. But we have a great one in the Big 10 right now. Purdue and Ohio State tied at 13 apiece. Ohio State has a date with. Offside defense, it's a five yard penalty, replay first down.
Thank you. 